Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 9th of March. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 34 I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name for ever. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon him and be radiant, and your faces shall not be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Blessed are those who trust in him. Fear the Lord, all you his holy ones. Those who fear him lack nothing. Lions may lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is there that delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the troubles of the righteous. From them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps all their bones, so that not one of them is broken. But evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and will condemn none who seek refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Send your holy angels to watch over us, O loving God, that on our lips will be found your truth, and in our hearts your love. For his sake, who died for love of our love, even Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. A reading from the seventh chapter of St. John's Gospel. After this, Jesus went about Galilee. He did not wish to go about in Judea because the Jews were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now the Jewish festival of booths was near. So his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one who wants to be widely known acts in secret. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify against it that its works are evil. Go to the festival yourselves. I am not going to this festival, for my time has not yet fully come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone to the festival, then he also went, not publicly, but, as it were, in secret. The Jews were looking for him at the festival and saying, Where is he? And there was considerable complaining about him among the crowds, while some were saying, He is a good man. Others were saying, No, he is deceiving the crowd. Yet no one would speak openly about him for fear of the Jews. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm isn't a prayer, it's a serene declaration to others of gratitude to God for his protection and providence, particularly an audience of younger generations. It celebrates freedom from fear that comes to all who trust in their maker. The psalmist speaks from experience of life, reflecting on what matters most. Every advertisement or worthwhile political campaign speech aims to convince its audience of benefits experienced and testified to by the advocate. Think about it. Paul is reported several times in the Acts of the Apostles and letters speaking about his conversion experience of being under God's protection on his missionary travels. How often do we do this? Testify to others what our relationship to God means to us. What gets in the way of doing this? Is it the reaction of others that we fear? In today's Gospel, we hear that following early hostility to his words and deeds in Jerusalem and Judea, Jesus decides to stay in Galilee, avoiding public attention after that earlier experience of a crowd wanting to promote him forcibly as king after feeding the multitude. He won't join his brothers on pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the festival of booths, celebrating the arrival in the promised land when Israelites remind themselves of their desert sojourn by camping out and dining outdoors, a proper open-air public event. His brothers, it says, question him about his decision not to draw attention to himself and promote himself publicly. Brothers here most likely refers to half-brothers, the sons of Joseph. In a side comment, John says they don't believe in him. They see how he's caught public interest in Galilee, so why hold back? They aren't confident of his judgment. They don't yet realise who this son of Mary truly is. For Jesus, timing is everything. Timing determined by God for him to testify to the truth in word and deed. What he does is to wait until later. We don't know how long. But when he goes to Jerusalem, he goes alone, avoiding attention. Is he there in the crowd, discerning a mixed reaction in street talk to his previous public appearances and the controversy surrounding them? It's not so much talk, but whispers. People are afraid of the Jews, John says. But which Jews does he refer to? The evangelist himself is Jewish. He's not being anti-Semitic. He uses this term to refer to ultra-Orthodox exclusive groups who think any kind of religion apart from their own is worthless. It's no compliment, that's for sure. For Jesus, discerning when the time is right to act relies on quietly listening as part of waiting on God to inspire him. How about us? Is this what we do? To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. In bright light and dull darkness, in the energy of each day, and the rest that comes with each night, we remember your goodness, O Lord. In the heavens high above our heads, in waters that run deep around the world, we remember your goodness, O Lord. In solid land and flowing seas, in vivid flowers and fruit-laden trees, we remember your goodness, O Lord. In the rising and setting of the sun and the cycles of the seasons, in the patterns of the shining stars, 
and remember your goodness, O Lord. Remember in your mercy, Lord, those for whom we pray. Remember your world in need of peace and healing. Remember us, O Lord, as we seek to offer ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice to the glory of your praise. We commend ourselves and all whose names are on our hearts to your mercy and protection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, strong and mighty, Lord of hosts and King of glory, cleanse our hearts from sin. Keep our hands pure and turn our minds from what is passing away, so that at the last we may stand in your holy place and receive your blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord have mercy upon us and bless us, for he is good and he loves all humankind. Amen.